friend welcome to the channel and in this particular video we are going to talk about the aws interview questions here we are specifically going to talk about 10 interview questions and uh, these are specifically from the aws and uh, as you know we are covering the multiple aws interview uh, services so accordingly i am covering the multiple interview questions as well which are the real one so our first question goes as what is user data in ec2 so if you remember uh, when we were talking about the ec2 we were talking about the user data as well and in the user data we were running few of the scripts as you can see and uh, with the help of these scripts we were uh, able to install the softwares and we were able to run the prerequisite kind of thing so whatever uh, prerequisite you have to do on your uh, server side that all the file creation software installation all those things you can do on the ec2 before it gets launched so whenever your ec2 will uh, come up and it will be in running state it will come up with all those script execution uh, prior to uh, its running state so that's the uh, help of the user data now there it will fit in and it will help you to do the automation kind of thing or to complete the prerequisite kind of thing while launching your virtual server your second question comes as explain the usage of eip in ec2 so EIP we have talked while uh, talking about the EC2 and uh, if you remember EIP uh, stands for elastic IP address and uh, this one I think I do have this covered yeah elastic IP it's a static public public IP v4 address provided by AWS and it can be used to associate with instance or network interface in a virtual private cloud where it is used like if you have the private uh, ec2 instance or if even if you have a public ec2 instance and if you see uh, whenever you start and stop the ec2 instance its public ip gets changed once you stop and start correct but if you want to make it uh, static you want that same public ip should be there uh, across the multiple state of the your ec2 instance for that you can launch one eip and you can associate that with your ec2 instance that will be having a cost but it will give you a static ip address for your ec2 so that's the usage of your eip in ec2 third question comes as how do we provide a static ip to aws ec2 instance so third question is very similar to the second one but it's uh, in a, it, it has been asked in a different way so whenever you have to uh, provide a static IP to your AWS EC2 instance, you can create one EIP and you can associate that with the your AWS EC2 instance. Fourth question, what are the different types of EC2? So for that, uh, you can similarly refer to these uh, instance types, d2.micro, d2.xlarge, c5.xlarge. And even uh, if you want to talk in more detail, so there are multiple uh, categories of the EC2 instance, general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, accelerated storage optimized and a different one there are different families as well the general purpose the t family r family for memory optimized and c5 for coptic compute optimized so these are the different uh, categories of the set instance that you can uh, learn more then uh, what fifth question what's the default route in main route table so route table if you remember we have talked that uh, in every vpc there is a default route table and that default route table is called uh, is main route table as well so in the main route table there is one uh, route mentioned that is at local and the destination uh, cidr of your vpc that means any request which is being made from the uh, which is made inside the vpc that can transverse between this uh, vpc correct so it has the full access to flow and to communicate uh, to establish the communication between the multiple services within the vpc so that uh, default route is all already there in your main route table sixth question is what is the use of vpc endpoint so if you remember uh, we have talked about the vpc endpoint as well and uh, there we have talked about uh, how your private resources can communicate with the other aws services uh, without using net or uh, and uh, without using internet gateway so here we have talked about the vpc endpoint let me go to the slide there vpc endpoint this one so here if you see there is a ec2 instance which is the which is in the private subnet and it has to communicate with the aws s3 service for that there is a vpc endpoint so with the help of vpc endpoint you can directly communicate with the other services 
and it will uh, establish a private communication so here you leave uh, left out the net gateway left out the internet gateway and you directly connected with your aws s3 with the help of vpc endpoint it saves your cost as well it saves your uh, it um, ensures your security as well by establishing a private network between the different services then seventh questions comes uh, how do we ensure that ec2 can avail internet but no request from outside can be made to web app running on aws ec2 so for that you can uh, create one net gateway and that net gateway you can configure in your private subnet so that only the ec2 instances can make the request for the internet but no one can uh, from the outside main uh, make the request to the your ec2 instance correct so net uh, net concept will come into here and that net we have talked about here so in the in, uh, starting when we were talking about the vpc so here probably we have talked about the subnets and then the public subnet and internet gateway and then net gateway so here if you see the we have this private uh, ec2 in private subnet it's trying to make the internet uh, request to the internet that is possible but while uh, internet is trying to make the request to the ec2 instance that is broken so this net gateway will come into the picture for this seventh question then question is what is target group and uh, ninth question is define auto scaling group and different policy so let's see all these three questions together target group auto scaling and different types of load balancer so for that we will have to move to this uh, ec2 section and uh, for that let's go from the uh, last question application load balancer and network load balancer so these are the two different types of load balancer the purpose the protocol support performance routing features sticky sessions and the use cases are mentioned here mainly your application load balancer works on layer 7 while network load balancer work on layer 7 uh, sorry layer 4 the protocol supported by uh, application load balancer is http https while network load balancer support tcp udp tls and uh, the use cases network load balancer can be used for uh, those use cases where uh, where you need very low latency and the use cases where you need real time data streaming uh, for the election results for live uh, in, in real time real time gaming for live uh, news streaming or something for iot related things you can use the nlb while for the net uh, simple microservice architecture web application you can use this application load balancer then one of the question was on the target groups so target group uh, let's talk about here target groups are nothing but it's just the combination or the group of the different uh, ec2 instances which are fulfilling a similar kind of uh, business uh, need like if you have different microservices and for one microservice uh, slash uh, first or slash cart you want to uh, route the traffic uh, to a one target group which will be having five ac2 instances so that whatever the request is coming for the card system that will go for all these five ac2 instances so with the help of target group you can combine multiple ac2 instances to share the workload then the the last question was based on the auto scaling group so if you see there was a last question uh, the what is target group that we covered different types of load balancer we covered then auto scaling group so auto scaling group it's uh, uh, one of the property of the AWS EC2 instance you can say where we do the scaling of the EC2 instances based on the some certain conditions correct so it's a con collection of EC2 instances that are treated as a logical grouping for the purpose of automatic scaling and management it lets you Amazon EC2 instance features such as health check replacement and scaling policy both maintaining the number of instances in auto scaling group and automatically uh, scaling are the core functionality of the ec2 auto scaling service what are the different policy target tracking scaling then a step scaling then simple scaling in simple scaling it increases and decreases the current capacity of the group based on a single scaling so one time it will do do the scaling then it will wait for some time that time duration will be called as cooldown period then once again it will do the uh, scaling for example cpu utilization goes up to 70 percent auto scaling will add two instances and it will for, it will wait for few seconds few seconds it might be minute and then it will do the further scaling in the step scaling it will do based on the how much uh, breach has happened so it adjusts the capacity of auto scaling based on the magnitude of 
the alarm bridge. So if uh, your uh, threshold uh, breaches up to 70%, it will launch two EC2 instances. If it, it goes for 80%, it will line, uh, launch five EC2 instances. If it goes up to 90, it will launch 10. So based on the different threshold, it will launch the different kind of, uh, different kind of a scaling it will do. While the target tracking is scaling, it does based on the, uh, it kind of, uh, it do it does the scaling logically like uh, if the bridge is higher it will scale up on the higher number if bridge goes down it will uh, uh, scale down the number of ac2 instances so it increases and decreases the current capacity of the group based on the temperature amazon cloud watch metric and a target value it works similar to the way that your threshold sorry thermostat maintains the temperature of your room let's go with the example if you set a target CPU utilization of 50%, auto scaling add or remove instances as needed to keep CPU usage around 50%. So it will in, uh, scale up and scale down both. Correct. So that's what we wanted to cover uh, during this AWS interview questions. And uh, we will meet in the next video with the further AWS interview questions and uh, other DevOps interview questions. Till the time, thank you. Bye bye. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel for more technical content to the channel and here in this particular video we are going to talk about the AWS interview question and this is the part 4 of the inter interview questions correct in this video we are going to talk about the scenario based interview questions which comes in your AWS interview or the DevOps interview or any of the interview which is related to the cloud so the first question is I have three EC2 machines A, B and C A that means A machine is deployed in VPC A while B and C are deployed in VPC B, correct? What does that mean? That means you have three machines out of which first is deployed in one VPC and rest of the two are deployed in the second VPC. Now, I want that applications running on EC2A. That means the application is running on first machine, which is in the part of uh, VPC1 and rest of the EC2 machines on which applications are running is in the second VPC, correct? Now, what you have to do you have to set up the communication between these two, correct? If you can see, application running on EC2A also interacts with application running on EC2B. But at the same time, I want that application A should not interact with the C. That means you have to establish the cross VPC communication, but you don't have to allow it for every EC2 machines, correct? So what approach you will do here? First of all, you will have to establish either VPC pairing, correct? So for that, either you will do the VPC pairing connection directly between the two BP, these two VPC or you can set the transit gateway concept that I have already covered in the channel. So you can watch out there as well. So you will have to set up the VPC pairing between these two uh, VPC, correct, A and B. And then you, you will have to uh, pass this in the route, uh, route domains, correct? Sorry, the route table itself, the term is route table. So you will have to configure the CIDR of the first VPC in the second uh, uh, route table of the second VPC and then the second VPC CIDR in the route table of first VPC, correct? Then only the VPC A and B can uh, uh, can allow the request or the network uh, or the traffic which is coming to interact with each other, correct? So that VPC pairing you will have to establish, then you will have to implement the security group so that the request can uh, go uh, up to there on the second VPC, uh, second application which is in the, uh, which is on the second uh, machine that is called as B, correct. So here it comes as a VPC pairing connection and then the security group and NACL. All these three concepts will uh, come here into the picture to uh, implement this. Then next question. On a day with unusually high traffic for an e-commerce application, how would you as a cloud engineer manage the current setup to handle the load smoothly? What does that mean? Just suppose today you, you do have 1000 number of users on your e-commerce application. Tomorrow it's a sale day, correct? Or any of the festive season. Accidentally, oh sorry, not accidentally, uh, you, you are predicting that your traffic is going to uh, be high. Or even if you are not predicting, suddenly it will go high. So what you will have to do? First of all, your e-commerce application should be highly available. For that, you can deploy this in multiple subnets. Your load balancer should be uh, available in uh, across the multiple availability zones. That means in the different uh, multiple uh, uh, subnets, correct? Then you will have to uh, attach this auto scaling groups so that whenever the number of requests increases, the CPU utilization increases, 
the scale happens dynamically for that you will have to create the auto scaling groups you will have to create the different target groups to handle the uh, different kind of request based on the different path to handle it smoothly even you will have to attach the dynamic policy in the auto scaling groups so that whenever the certain number of request increases it will automatically scale up the number of instances and whenever the traffic reduces it will automatically scale down the number of instances okay so that kind of setup you will have to do over here next question have you experienced any challenging issue in your project how did you or your team identify the resolve identify and resolve such issue for that if you have worked with any uh, such scenario if you have worked with any such issues in your uh, current project or previous project that you can explain in details you can talk about the technical things as well you can talk about the non technical things as well correct that means uh, whenever a issue arises uh, you, you got you get uh, that like the whoever identify uh, it there might be a scenario that customer identifies the problem he reports it to, to the customer uh, support team or any of the client facing team which is in your organization correct so it will report to that they will uh, either create a jira for you or they can create any uh, tickets for you based on the tool what you are using service now or any other tool you are using github uh, issues so a- any kind of thing they can uh, pass it to your team and then from uh, your team someone uh, will be assigned to work on that correct and then we, they will work it fits the production issue and that needs to be immediately fixed there will be a call major bridge call you you can call you can call that bridge bridge call you can uh, any terminology whatever you your organization is giving uh, for that particular call so emergency call or any anything correct so that call will be set up and the different team uh, will be uh, there and whoever represents that team that a spoke person will be there on the team and they will uh, uh, sit together to fix that particular issue correct so for that you can mention anything like database storage uh, limit got exceeded or your application uh, url which was deployed uh, application api which was deployed that was having the bug so any kind of issue you can explain and you can answer next question is suppose i have one running server in aws on which my internet facing e-commerce application is running the application needs to show product pictures on the portal and all these pictures are stored in s3 bucket what does that mean you have one ec2 machine on which uh, one uh, application is running that means it's a public uh, uh, ec2 address uh, ec2 instance as well you can say just suppose that it's a public ec2 machine on which your one application is running and this application has to fetch some of the images from the s3 bucket so it's a simple uh, architecture you have to establish the communication between ec2 to s3 so for that you can you can create one im role you will give that uh, s3 access policy to the im role and that im role will be attached to the ec2 machine then uh, it will have the access to uh, get the pictures from the s3 bucket so that will be simple solution for your uh, 34th question correct then next question is which all aws service will you consider while setting up ci cd pipeline if you are setting uh, your jenkins as a ci cd pipeline you can consider uh, and you are deploying your application on the eks cluster so you can uh, consider the eks you can consider your ecr to uh, create the docker images and uh, post it to the repository so you can consider the ecr if you are uh, uh, using the aws managed services for the storage as well you can consider the s3 you can consider aws rds uh, uh, rds service you can consider kms secret manager so all these services you can uh, consider while setting up the ci cd pipeline mainly you can consider this uh, your uh, ec2 machines to run as a slave machines correct then you can consider your uh, what we can we can say the ecr where you will push the images whatever you images you will create you will push it on there so you can consider the eks cluster to which you will uh, communicate and you will deploy your services correct the applications itself so these are the few services you can consider uh, while setting up the ci cd pipeline for your applications so in this video i wanted to talk about all these uh, five questions only uh, which are scenario based and uh, in next video we'll be talking more about the different interview questions and the different aws services till the time thank you bye bye and stay tuned with the channel and uh, subscribe to the channel as well because that is the only thing which motivates me to create more and more content specifically till the time thank you bye bye